This video is brought to you by the supporters on Patreon. Hey guys, I'm here with a video showing you how I made the neck piece for my Taronda cosplay. So at this point, I've already cut out all of the pieces and I cut them out in 2mm EVA foam. I made the pattern for this neck piece using the duct tape method, however, if you want to just skip the patterning step altogether, these patterns are available on my store Envy and Etsy. Once I have all of my pieces cut out on 2mm EVA foam, I glue them all together except for the very back seam. I'm leaving that open so I could add in some closures in order to get it on and off. The glue I'm using for this is contact cement. Once I had the base of the neck piece glued together, I started adding on the details and those detailings are these beveled pieces on her armor. And to make those details, I'm using 10 millimeter EVA foam bevels. I bought these bevels from Cosplay Crafts and have a link to it in the description box below. I ask you if you do plan on buying from that site, to use my link because it helps support me because I get a small percentage of store credit from every sale made through my link which means I can buy more cosplay supplies to make more cosplays and tutorials for all of you guys and it's at no extra cost to you. Anyways, I'm using contact cement to glue all of these pieces down and I'm cutting the beveled pieces at an angle wherever they need to make meet up so that it all kind of flows into each other. Basically you want the top edge of the bevel or the top of the triangle to flow from one piece to the other at all times. I'll have another video on this coming out soon that shows how is best to connect bevel pieces since it can be a little bit tricky because they are angled. But basically it's just cutting everything at an angle so that it matches up with one another. After all of those bevels were added to the base of the neck piece, I started working on this necklace part of the neck piece. So this part just kind of hangs right below the neck piece and it looks like it could be a necklace but it also doesn't quite look like a necklace. So I'm not really sure what to call it but I'm just going to go with necklace. Anyways, to make this was a little bit more tricky because it doesn't have any sort of backing. It's just a bunch of bevels glued to one another which meant there was no real pattern I could cut this out in. Instead, I had to cut a bunch of bevels at a bunch of different lengths and glue them all to one another. In order to figure out what length I needed everything to be, I drew out a rough shape of the pattern I was going for or the design I was going for and then just slowly cut out bevels piece by piece, flipping it whenever it came to having to do the other half of the necklace. I used 10 millimeter EVA foam bevels for this. This pattern or design also helped to act as a guide when it came to where to place each bevel or where to attach one bevel to another when it wasn't at you know, the corner, when it was like in the middle of a bevel instead, kind of like these round bits and 
the other bevel piece that goes right in between that curved center piece and the outer edge. Once that was all glued together, I took a heat gun and heated up the armor pieces and shaped that better. So right now you can see that the neck piece is kind of open and it kind of just stays open like that. So I used a heat gun to heat it up and curve it so that it would be pretty much closed. However, it's not going to stay perfectly closed on its own and will still need closure. This just made it easier, especially when it came to priming in order to avoid it like chipping and cracking when I tried to like adjust it later putting on the attachments. Uh, just a side note, make sure to wear a mask when working with a heat gun and to be careful because foam can get really hot and it might burn you so you might want to wear gloves if especially if you are new to this i had been debating for a while how i was going to attach these two pieces and ultimately decided that i'm just going to glue them together because it was just easier that way Once all that was done, it was time for the priming and painting and I've done this or did this the same way that I did all of her other armor and I do all of my armor in general. And that is I primed it with three to five layers of wood glue and then I used spray paint to paint on the white base of her neck piece and this paint in particular is sandable so I sanded down a layer of that spray paint just to fill in some of the seam lines and make sure everything was really nice and smooth looking or as smooth as possible and then added one more layer of white spray paint or one or two more layers just to get it nice and opaque before moving on to the next part. The reason why I used this white paint in particular besides the fact that it was sandable was also because this spray paint was very opaque and it required a lot less layers than other white paints that I had worked with in the past did. After that white base was on I taped that off and then used an airbrush to paint all of the silver pieces on her armor silver. And once that was done, I taped those sections off and then went back through or am going back through as you see in this clip here with a greenish blue color and I'm using that for the shading because her armor looks like it has like a greenish bluish tint to it and in some of the reference photo it just looks like that's what the shadows are colored in her armor as well this greenish bluish color. You totally don't need an airbrush to paint this on by the way acrylic paint and a paintbrush would work perfectly fine just add a little bit of water to blend out the edges whenever you feel it's needed. I topped all the paint off or sealed it with a clear coat of glossy spray paint. After that, the final step was to add on these resin gems that I made and I casted these using resin and a blue transparent film. However, I didn't really like using the film and will definitely be going back to the good old food coloring method in the future. And I, for the mold, I used a egg shape mold, egg shaped silicone mold to be exact. And I just glued these into place using hot glue. When it came to the necklace piece, I just added in a layer of two millimeter EVA foam on the back where it was going to be attached to this gem so that it had something to adhere to because I didn't feel like just gluing it to the bevel was going to give it enough support. I used some pliers to remove some excess glue as well. Just glue that kind of spilled over the edges a little bit. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful and stick around for future videos. Thanks for watching, have a lovely day, and bye.